10. In order to succeed as a producer, you need to succeed first as a businessman. You need to negotiate with people that want to book you for a gig. You need to do business with a label that wants to release your music. You need to do business with a promotional services provider that will help you reach a bigger audience. Every businessman has bad habits, but I have never seen one waking up 2 o'clock in the afternoon. When you wake up 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it's like you don't care about anything going on. You care only about your sleep. And the universe understands those things. It will hit you back like a fucking boomerang. If you think that being a talented musician is enough, you are mistaken. You need to do business all the way. And a businessman wakes up early in the morning. A businessman wakes up early in the morning because he doesn't want to lose any chance that might occur or be unaware of any possible happenings. That is his nature. Businessmen wake up early. That's a fucking rule. 9. Your music is clearly not good enough. You started making music a few years ago and you think that that is enough. It isn't. Unless you are a miracle boy. I make music 20 fucking years. In the beginning, I thought my music was fantastic. That the world was about to discover the new super talented star, Angelos Mavros. As years pass, even though my music is improving, my judgment is becoming more and more austere. I currently believe that my music is totally lame and does not even deserve to be released. If you think that your music is bad, you are on the right pathway. If you think that your music is awesome and you deserve to make a living out of it, you have many years ahead of you to struggle until you realize the truth, which is that your music sucks. 8. You have no social media engagement. You realized only recently that you need a YouTube channel in which you have 35 subscribers and you are bored of uploading frequently because you realized that you might need to upload 5 videos in order to get one new subscriber and that makes you feel frustrated. You don't even have a Twitter account. Twitter is as powerful as Instagram. But you haven't realized the power of it. And the same applies for LinkedIn, Tumblr, TikTok and many other social networks that you haven't even heard of. You have no clue what to post on Instagram because you run out of content and out of ideas. And thus, you post a picture of yourself holding your cat, which makes a bad impression rather than a good one. You have no clear message and no professional covers. You just sit there and wait for people to discover you for the quality of your music and for the very essence that your music beams. 7. Your music has no identity. Can you distinguish a Van Gogh from an El Greco painting? Sure you can. Why is that? It's called artistic signature. They paint in a very specific way that characterizes their art. Quality is subjective, but a recognizable pattern is objective. All people can see that pattern and define those artists. Their style makes them unique, makes them recognizable, adds value. Your music needs to be recognizable. And when somebody listens to it, he must be able to say, Oh, what I hear must be infected mushroom. Oh, what I'm listening must be Vinnie Vici. And your music, my friend, has no musical identity because you are constantly trying to imitate other artists and you think that your outputs are great, but they are just soulless replicates. 
with no personal stamp, no signature, and no characteristics. 6. No connections. You think talent and good music is all that it takes for the music industry to discover you. I have some really bad news for you. It's all about connections. It's all about who you know, who will book you for a gig, who will write a good critic for you on his blog, who will curate your music into his big Spotify playlist, who will upload your music on his enormous YouTube channel. If you don't network with important people, you are simply going nowhere. Don't just wait there for a handout. No one will ever lay his hand to help you. You have to reach them by yourself. One of the revelations that I had recently is that not all people are stupid, but they all are stubborn. It's not that they don't know what to do. It's just that they want to do it in their own freaking way. Everyone knows what to do. As everyone knows what is wrong and what is right. A four-year-old kid can tell the difference between good and evil. If I ask you, what is the fault with your musical career? Why aren't you making any money? Why aren't you having any gigs? You know the answer. You don't need me to tell you why this is happening. You already know. And you know what to do in order to change it. But you want to do it in your own freaking way, which is pretty similar to not doing it. So the world is as it is. Accept it and play with its rules or go to a fucking mountain and pretend to be a spiritual guru. If you want to be successful in the music industry, there are things that you must do. You must lick somebody's ass in order to get some gigs. You must pay some YouTubers to upload your music. There is no other way. 5. You have visions of disbelief. Questions are spinning inside your head. Will I ever make it? What if I'm not capable? What if I'm old? What if I'm late? In order to succeed in music business, you need all the confidence of the universe. Achieving is believing. If you don't believe in yourself, you won't make it. Sometimes the lack of faith flows from your friends. Let's be honest. Nobody believes in you. Most of your friends, at some point, told you as a joke, or seriously, that you are not going to be a superstar, or that you have no talent, or that you are a dreamer, and they broke your heart. Someone might think that those people, by discouraging you, actually strengthen your will and make you try harder and harder. But that is not the case. What in fact is happening is that they are harassing your psychology. Show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. If your friends are jobless losers, that won't help much. Because they are passing over to you subconsciously the mindset of the loser. Those people are infecting your mindset and planting a seed in your soul that what you are trying to accomplish is impossible. Well, I'm here to tell you what the fuck do they know? Four. There are two kinds of people. Those that are willing to invest their time in order to get the money back in the future and those that demand to get paid from the very first day at work. Both characteristics can be found in successful musicians. But our time favorites the businessman type. So if you are willing to invest your time and your money, you might get something in return. But if you fall in the other category, in which you wake up late because you don't care about the market, 
and you care only about getting paid for the extra quarter that you worked overtime, I don't see how you will ever manage to make it. If you believe that a big plot is being circulated behind your back in which a few rich families are here to possess all the money and you are just the victim of this situation, that you are somehow enslaved by the system, if you believe that, you are fucked. If you believe in conspiracy theories in which the big labels or the big television networks want to keep you poor so they can take advantage of you, you are fucked. If you think that money are essential in order for someone to succeed, you are fucked. Money is a trading medium. They can help, yes, but they are not the only medium. You can work hard instead or get help by other people and compensate for not having money. Using money to increase your fame and your sales, it is an investment that most of the time will not pay back. So no matter how much money you spend, if the people are not interested for you, if the people are not interested for your music, you won't make it. I've seen many people getting frustrated because they truly believe that money is what they need in order to go forth. They truly believe that rich people will necessarily become more rich and poor will stay poor. That means that they have no idea about marketing, investing or succeeding. If you have that kind of ideology, this video is not for you. I have witnessed first-hand individuals making fortunes with their bare hands. During the Greek crisis, 250,000 businesses closed and almost 1 million workplaces lost during the years 2009 and 2016. But I worked with a mentor who managed during those exact same years to upgrade his business. While everyone else was failing, we succeeded. But you are not as lucky as I am. You were raised by some brokes who never understood how the market operates. And they implanted this communistic ideology in your brains that no matter how hard you work, the rich guys will always be ahead of you. And thus, whenever you hear the word competition, you get vesicles and blisters. How are you going to compete if the word competition is not in your vocabulary? I won't compete. I will produce something extraordinary and the world will discover me. Yeah, right. 3. A very common reason you could be failing in music industry is because you are not working for the music industry. You have a daily job and music is your hobby. And because you have this hobby for a long time, you think that you can turn it into a profession by having another job at the same time. That is mainly because you are being thoughtful, wise. You wait to become known first, to make some money with your music before you give up your daily job. Well, guess what? It doesn't work like this. It works the other way around. You need to give up on your job if you want to have slight chances of succeeding. There are many guru, many wise people out there telling you, do your hobby, but keep your real job in order to be able to sustain yourself and your family till you manage to make money out of your hobby and then you can quit. They are telling you, do your hobby, but have a steady source of income for safety. Well, guess what? Those people have not made it in the music industry and they don't know what it takes for someone to make it. Ask me, I fucking know. You cannot have two gods.
you will either serve music and starve or serve your needs. And if you want to convert your passion into a profession, you have to work 24-7. There is no time for an ordinary job. If you have a daily job and you are waiting for someone to discover you before you take the big step of giving up your daily job in order to commit to music, then go ahead and forget about it because it is never going to happen. People work 7-8 to eight hours doing something they dislike and they think that that is called a job. Well, I'm working all day, every day. Not because someone forces me, but because I have goals. I like it. And no one can stop me from reaching my goals. And I don't work in a routine doing the same things over and over every single day. No. I work with skepticism. I use my brains. I work with expertise that I consolidated through 20 years of experience. Only when you like something so much that you think of it when not actually working can bring the results that you need. And your friends do not understand that because they think a job is something that you do 8 hours a day without thinking. They don't understand that in order to succeed in music business you have to rediscover America. On one hand, we have a McDonald's worker. His expertise over his job was obtained with a few seminars of 20 hours in total. On the other hand, we have a total whacked producer like me. His expertise over his field counts 20 whole years instead of 20 hours. He works as many hours as possible, including weekends, and he gets, for example, 500 euro per month. But check this out. The best thing that could ever happen to a McDonald's employee is to become the manager of his shop and earn 2,000 euro per month. The best thing that could happen to a producer is to make a world hit and make millions. That is the price we are willing to pay and the leverage that we might get. That is why I said that we are businessmen. We are investors. We are gamblers. We gamble everything and some of us win big. If you have an ordinary job, you are not ready to gamble. Two, you have no plan whatsoever. Or, in the best case scenario, your plan is the upcoming release of your single in a month from now. That is not a plan. That is an incident about to happen. Plans are strategically formed variables. They are flexible. They are changing and adjusting all the time. From time to time, I've had side projects with totally different plans, like licensing music on Audio Jungle or becoming a ghost producer and many other plans that didn't work out or worked out partially. I make plans for myself and I make plans for my label. I constantly adjust and pitch up my plans till I get results. You have to set reachable targets and know where you are headed and keep that target for as long as you can. But if you see that there is nothing there or if you feel that the destination is unreachable, then you have to shift plans. In life, is not the stronger that wins, but he who adjusts better to his environment. I work 16 hours per day. 8 to 10 hours I work with my computer. And the rest, I work with my brains. I make plans. My mind is constantly making strategies and exploring possibilities about how to influence people and eventually convert them into buyers or listeners. And I look around me, what other producers are doing. And the vast majority of them have no plan. They are just producing tracks and waiting to be discovered. And that is what a producer is supposed to do, you will say. No, that is what an ultra-gifted producer is supposed to do. 
The rest of us should make plans. Stop making music and make plans. You are certainly improving in music making as the years pass, but you really think that that is enough? It's not enough. Everybody's music is improving at the same time, and in some cases, much faster than yours. Young kids that can go along with the trends can produce better music than yours in a younger age with much less effort and much higher comfort. How are you going to compete against that? By making a fucking plan. Why are you here? What is the reason you are trying so hard? What are you trying to prove? Find the answer to this question and success will knock at your fucking door. Ask yourself, what are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to do? If the answer is more than a simple sentence, you are fucked. The answer should be a tiny sentence with one object and one verb. I want to produce music. I want to travel the world. I want to be famous. I want to make a hit. I want to collaborate with Vinnie Vici. I want to be a pianist. I want to be a label manager. I want to suck cocaine backstage with the best models. Then and only then you might be able to fulfill your dreams. Each sentence changes the strategy and the things you need to do in order to succeed. If you want to make collaborations, go ahead and contact some people. If you dream to meet your favorite DJ, go ahead and send him a message and tell him that you have leukemia or something and that your days are numbered and your last wish is to meet him. That will get the fucking job done. If you want to travel the world, go find a job in a travel agency. But your problem is that you want it all. So you are fucked. Because none of this will happen. And none of this will happen because you are trying to do many things at the same time and you are not doing anything right. You are making one collaboration per year, you are releasing one song every six months, you are having one gig per year and nothing is moving in the way that it should. So choose something. Make up your mind. Ask yourself what you want to do and answer with one small sentence. I want to make music tutorials. I want to make money out of live performances. I want to make sellable goods. I want to be famous. You can't do everything together. Now, you might ask, how comes and famous artists do everything together? You must understand that in this life, you can't choose who you will be. You can only try for it. It's like asking a woman, what is that you look for in a man? And she responds, I just want someone to love me for what I really am. No, you don't want just someone to love you. You want someone who is not a killer, someone who is not a criminal. Someone who is not incapable of having kids. Someone who has no cancer. Someone who has no HIV. Someone who is not schizophrenic. Not a thief. Not a maniac. Not a Scrooge McDuck. Someone who will not beat you. Someone who is not jobless. Someone who talks nicely to you. Someone who takes care of you. Someone who brings you flowers. And she just said, I just want somebody to love me. You are doing the same thing. You say that you want to succeed in music business, but you imply 1000 things, which is more or less translated to I want gigs, I want to be a rock star, I want to have worldwide fame, I want to make money with my computer, I want my music to be heard all over the world, I want to travel all over the world, I want to perform in big venues, I want to find myself backstage with some supermodels and some first class Colombian cocaine. And none of this is going to happen, because you want it all. And he who wants it all, gets nothing. What if I told you 
that you can work as a teacher teaching other people how to play an instrument or how to use Ableton Live and make a living out of that. What if I told you that you can work as a ghost producer without fame, without anyone knowing about you and be able to do what you love, making music and make a living out of it. Would you do it? Would you be a teacher? Would you be a ghost producer? No, you wouldn't. Because it's not the job that you love, it's the fame, it's the glory, it's what comes with the job that you pursue. And that, my friend, is the number one reason that you are failing. Vanity, definitely my favorite sin.